Hi, everybody. I just wanted to spend a minute today talking about thought distortions. Um, in my role as a coach, I'm in the people helping business. Uh, in my role where I help people publish their work, their, their writing, whether that's memoir or fiction or information or inspiration, theology, whatever, whatever the topic, um, I'm fascinated by human behavior and what comes out in the pages of their story. Um, and I've got a client who I've helped him with a series of cop detective novels. And it's been fascinating because I've seen him project himself into the main character and project the issues he has with people in his life into the supporting characters. Um, and not that I step into therapy with him coaching him through his fiction novels, but this concept of thought projections, the way we project our thoughts onto others, um, it's kind of fascinating to me. And I have other clients I work with uh, in the coaching realm that I find that, that this is a key, how we think about ourselves, how we think about God, how we think about thinking. The way we construct our thoughts is elemental to the way we interact with the world around us and therefore the way the world around us interacts back to us. So I think I'm gonna do a little series on thought projections because, I mean, on thought distortions, things like all or nothing thinking and there's several thought distortions. But today I wanna to focus on projecting thoughts when we project our thoughts onto others. Um, listen, the truth that we, the truth is often far less harsh than the lies we tell ourselves. Um, and I encourage all of my clients over and over again, I say this, be your own best friend. Most of the time, the way we speak to others, if, if we were to talk to others the way we talk to ourselves, we would have no friends. And we are our, our own worst enemies, our own harshest critics. And the, the things we say about ourselves to ourselves is often not very nice at all. So I always tell everyone, you know, be your own best friend. You need to learn how to, how to talk to yourself the, in any situation the way you would speak to your best friend. So what's the deal with, with uh, projecting our thoughts onto others? Well, first of all, projecting thoughts is an unconscious defense mechanism. We don't usually do this like on purpose. We're not aware it's in our subconscious mind. It's, it's unconscious, it's a defense mechanism. It's, we do it when, we, when there's something about us that we feel is unacceptable, some unacceptable, unacceptable part of ourselves. It could be the way our feelings or our thoughts, tendencies, our fears, um, anything that we're struggling with emotionally and we don't have the capacity at the moment to embrace or deal with, we can disown those things by projecting them onto someone else. We project our, our feelings, our thoughts, our issues, literally our projections contain our blind spots. So if we're in a season where our self-awareness is low, if we're in a season where we're not paying attention to our weaknesses, not paying attention to the faults and flaws, not in the way that we pick at ourselves, but in the way that we have a growth mindset that we want to move beyond ourselves. When we find ourselves in that situation, we can easily start projecting our issues onto someone else in our life. Could be someone close to us that we love, could be people we work with, could be total strangers, cashiers or whatever. We tend to project what's going on underneath the surface with us that we haven't dealt with, it's easy for us to project it onto someone else. It's a way we can disown it. Um, it happens when we imagine, it can happen when we imagine we know what other people are thinking about us. That's one of the things that can happen. And um, we can project our negative thoughts onto them. We assume they've got a negative thought. So we uh, connect with them. We talk to them. We interact with them as though we knew what they were thinking, and sometimes they don't disappoint us. They rise to our expectations, our negative, hard expectations, and don't disappoint us. And we implant thoughts into them that they weren't having before we projected them. And we respond to them as though they were thinking those thoughts. And before long, um, maybe they are thinking those thoughts. Uh, some, common, some common thought projections, we project our fear or our anxiety on someone else. And we can protect feelings of shame or guilt. Um, our insecurities, um, even things that are the source of it is childhood pain or trauma or issues we have with our parents. Um, we can project our expectations into something. Um, this is dangerous when we haven't communicated our expectations. We have expectations. We haven't communicated what they are, and then we get our feelings really hurt when they're not met. Um, 
We project judgment onto people. We, re, we can project our unresolved, unfinished business on other people. Those, those open loops, things that we haven't had the opportunity to resolve, maybe with a parent or with an aunt or uncle or a spouse, whatever it is, these, this unfinished business, we can, we can bring it up and throw it onto someone else because in our heart, we want that business to be finished. We want to close that loop. And it gives pent up emotions and eventually we don't have the capacity to deal with those emotions. So we just throw them onto someone else. We can even project issues that are getting down to our core beliefs. Um, it could be beliefs that we haven't even defined or if we've defined them, we're not sure we can own them. Um, shame, blame, weaknesses, failures, inadequacies, guilt. It is like we're dumping trash into somebody else's bedroom and then we're angry because they're so messy. That is what thought projections are. We are projecting things into a relationship, blindsiding the person because they don't know we feel that way about them, but we're responding to them as though they should have known all along what our issues were with them. And oftentimes our issues aren't even with the person that we're projecting things onto. It's with someone or something else. Um, and we can sabotage relationships that are important to us, meaningful, valuable. Um, we project things to avoid emotional responsibility. Sometimes we're just not able to deal with our emotional clutter. And so we make things somebody else's fault. I know I've been guilty of that um, unknowingly. Sometimes I had to, I went through a season right around the time I turned 50. I went through a real season of like, like so many people do, it's not uncommon to go through a little bit of an identity crisis, midlife crisis, be that as it may. And added to that, I had a medical crisis, a medical trauma. And that just put me into a tailspin of, being alone with myself enough to get real with myself and dig into some things that I had been projecting onto other people and creating a repetitive pattern of behavior back to me. Um, and I was the common denominator in that behavior pattern change. Um, you project things onto people long enough, they either will walk away from you or they will begin to reflect back the things you're projecting onto them. So, you know, you got to realize you are not a mind reader. You don't know what other people are thinking about you unless they tell you. If you're projecting things onto them, remember, you're not a mind re reader. If you find yourself, um, some, some behaviors, if you, if you find yourself being highly reactive, if you find yourself um, you know, in certain behavior chains, behavior patterns, ask, could I be projecting some issues into this situation? Is it, is it me? Am I the one projecting this into the situation or is it real? So, um, you know, as I work with people in coaching, I'll tell them first check in. Why do you feel this way? When you find yourself, you know, things trigger us. Anyone ever had a thing trigger? And I know we all hear triggered. It's unfortunate the word is overused now because it sort of takes away some of the value and meaning of what the word trigger actually means. What happens when people honestly are triggered, but if you can dig into what triggers you and why it triggers you, it can help you. Um, what is it? Why do you feel this way? What do you dislike about others? What we dislike about others is often what we dislike in ourselves. The thing that drives us the most crazy in our child or most crazy in our spouse or with our boss, the thing that drives us absolutely bonkers about someone else, ding, 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 is often a mirror. That's what drives us crazy about ourselves. Um, and so do I feel overly hurt or defensive? Am I, are, am I sensitive, highly sensitive about what other someone else has said or done? So that's another trigger, if um, not a trigger, but an indicator. If I'm, if I'm highly sensitive, if I'm easily hurt, easily, easily offended, it could be that I'm projecting things onto other people. Is there someone in my life who can just push my buttons? No one else can like no one else's business. Other people get away with this. Other people can do the same things to me times 10 and I'm calm and cool, but this one person can just push my buttons by walking in a room. All right. Probably I need to dig into that and find out, okay, what's, what's the source of that? Um, are you quick to blame or quick to judge? Uh, can I be, can you be objective? Is it difficult to be objective? Is it difficult to have perspective of someone else. What is it like? Can I put myself in their shoes? If I'm having trouble putting myself in someone else's shoes, um, it's an indicator that I maybe need to dig into some things and increase my awareness. If I have trouble seeing things from others' point of views, if I'm having trouble having empathy for another person, um, 
these are just indications that I might have some blind spots. I might be projecting some of my own unresolved issues into other relationships. And if the good news is, if I can get to the bottom of these things, if I can sit with myself, if I can journey into those blind spots and gain some valuable perspective, work through them, heal through them, you know, some of the stuff going on in my life can change. I, I say often, anything I've chosen my way into, I can choose my way out of. Um, so things that we've done that, that maybe we've, we're starting to have some collateral damage to our relationships because we're projecting things, we can see that come to, we can see that change. You can see that change. So to do that, we got to get honest with ourselves. Um, are you asking things of other people to avoid asking it of yourself? Are you looking for something for some from someone? Are you looking for something from someone that you are having trouble manifesting in your own life? Um, that's that's an indication that there might be some projections going on. What emotions are you experiencing right now when this person or this thing begins to trouble you and you have these negative spikes of feelings when these things happen? Um, what emotions are you experiencing? Why do they trouble you? What triggers that projection? Is it a who? Is it a what? Um, I was visiting with, with a lady that I was just walking through and she's been through some bitter things, a hard, hard divorce. Um, and she has, you know, children. And some of the children, no problem. I can deal with, deal with, deal with this. But this one child, always butting heads, always, at, okay, but the thing is, this child has a personality that reminds her most of her spouse. So she's actually been uh, unaware, had no idea, was projecting issues onto this child and responding to this child with the unresolved business she has with the divorced spouse. Now, the good news is once you're aware of that, you can begin to unpack what that is and say, cognitively, this person is not this person. I don't, the, the way I'm responding to this person, uh, I'm, I'm projecting unresolved business, unresolved issues, and I'm reacting to personality. She was just actually reacting to the personality because it was so similar to the spouse's personality. So what is making you trigger? Like maybe you're responding to your boss, but your boss is actually reminding you of your father or your mother or some other authority figure you had trouble with in your childhood. And you're re responding to this boss because you've got unresolved business with someone from a long time ago. And it's just, could just be their personality, could be their looks, even sometimes a scent, the way someone smells, the aftershave they wear, the cologne or the clothes, the styling. Some of those things can trigger us and we begin to project our unresolved business with someone else because we've pushed that thing down so far. But the good news is that we can dig into that. So why, when something or someone is triggering, triggering you, if you ask yourself why, why is this triggering me? What from my past is this bringing to the surface that I haven't wanted to deal with and I still don't want to deal with, but I don't want to keep having it interrupt my future. I don't want to keep tripping over this obstacle. So what, what part of the past is it triggering? Is it them or is it something else? Is it someone else? Do business with that someone else. Even if you have to do business in a journal, write them a letter and burn it. I'm not saying you even have to send it to them, but do business with what the real thing is so you can stop projecting the unfinished business on someone else. Um, it could be that you're afraid of becoming like that person. Like I said, the things we dislike in others typically are the things we dislike the most in ourselves. So maybe, maybe you, you've got a reaction to a person because you don't want to be like them or because you're afraid other people will think you're like them. Well, why is that? Figure out, get to the bottom of it. What stories are you telling yourself? What's your script? What's the real honest to goodness truth versus what lies are you telling yourself about yourself or about this person or about this situation? Remember I said the truth is often far less harsh than what we've manufactured. And sometimes we've just told ourselves that story so long, it's become so familiar that we believe it as the gospel truth and it's not. And we believe what we hear ourselves say. And if we say it often enough and long enough, we tend to believe that that is the truth. That's the danger with living your truth. Um, you've got to make sure that your truth is actual truth. It's, it is the truth. It's not a circumstance. It's not a projection. It's not a distortion. You've got to make sure. So what, what stories are you telling yourself? What boundaries might you need to set? 
either to avoid what's triggering you, the person, place, or thing, or what boundaries do you need to set with yourself? If you can identify what the trigger is and think about how, how would I like to show up? Um, there's a book out there called Habits. I think it's Charles Duhigg. I love the book. I haven't read it in a while, but uh, they talk about that, you know, we, we, we go on autopilot, like a thing triggers us and we go on this auto routine to the stimulus that the trigger is the stimulus and we have a response and it's just an auto routine. And the way that they get people to change a habit is where they identify the trigger and then they replace the routine. Identify the trigger and replace the routine to, until you formed a new habit. So this can help us even emotionally. If we can identify what's triggering us, like the example, the, the lady who realized that interaction with that child was, was triggering old unresolved business with the spouse. Okay, now that we know that, she, she can sit and say, okay, next time this happens, I'm aware this is a trigger. This is not real. This is a trigger. How do I want to respond? How do I want to show up in the conversation, in the interaction with my child? How do I want to honor them, make sure that they are seen and heard and valued and they're not paying the price simply because they have a personality similar to someone who hurt me? It gives them the power to decide what's the new routine to the trigger until we have a new habit. It's powerful. It gives, it gives you some, some control in a situation where you feel out of control. And then, you know, uh, the thing is, we've got to make a commitment that I'm going to stop projecting these things. Once I'm aware, if I am projecting onto someone else, I want to stop doing this. Um, and it takes a little soul searching, right? It takes, a, it takes looking at the pieces of the puzzle. Uh, they talk about often how fragmented, we have a fragmented self, all these little pieces of the pie that are just in there. If we haven't dealt with them, we haven't processed them with a counselor or with a journal, all these fragmented pieces that we just trip over. Well, by looking at them and processing them, fragmentation leads to integration. We begin to integrate these things into a, into a narrative in our life, into a story that can lead us to feeling more whole. Fragmentation leads to integration. Integration leads to wholeness. Um, so we got to visit with those pieces. I often think of it like a mosaic. You know, somebody comes to me and their life is just a hopeless, broken, shattered mess. We got all these pieces of the puzzle. I had a dream. I had a plan. I had something. And here I am. I've hit a certain age and I don't know how anything fits together in my life. Well, this takes, honestly, I, I lean into, into the father, God, the father, the, the one who can take and take all these fragmented shards of different colors and different shapes and different things that don't go together. And he can, the master artist, the master designers, put these mosaic fragmented pieces. He can integrate them into a beautiful picture. If you go down to San Antonio and you uh, on the river walk, you can see these amazing giant mosaics, little itty bitty pieces of tile, all different colors, all different shapes, all different sizes. They've all been put together and they make these phenomenal, gorgeous pictures. So like a mosaic artist is amazing. And God is the most amazing mosaic artist with your life. He can take these fragmented shards of brokenness and begin to integrate them into a new picture. So you can have wholeness, right? So examining all those fragments helps put the pieces together. It helps with integration. And um, you might just have to pause, kind of breathe deeply, fellowship with the father, ask God for clarity in this situation. Ask him, what did this mean? Be willing to ask yourself hard questions and be willing to answer them, even if the answers aren't very pretty or if the answers lead you to asking more questions. The more you ask questions of yourself, um, the, the better your questions, the greater your clarity. Ask God for clarity. Ask him to show up for you. Visit with him in safety. He is the counselor. He is the comforter. He can help you bring all of these fragmented pieces together so you'll stop projecting them onto other people and you deal with and do business with yourself. Let God do business with your heart and bring you into a place of wholeness, a place of redemption. Through God alone, you'll be able to begin to set some healthy boundaries. If, if you've had issues with people in the past, you got to learn how to set boundaries. And there's so many great resources for that. Look into Henry Cloud and boundaries. And, and maybe I'll discuss some of these topics again later. But so many people way more qualified than I am. I just, here I am doing what I do, learning what I learn learning with you and, and whatever I learn, I'm happy to share with you. There might be some conversations that need to be had with some people in your life. And we don't always have the luxury 
of having the conversation. Maybe someone has passed on. They're not even alive anymore, or maybe they're not in your life and you have no connection, or maybe having a conversation with them that you need to have in your heart would make you unsafe. Like that's not even safe. There's ways to do that. You can write those conversations. You can, uh, it can be very healing to write it down and burn it and release it. It's very, very healing to have healing conversation with someone you trust. Um, with a counselor or a coach or a trusted friend, pastoral minister, just, just the opportunity to process things and bring them to speech can really be freeing and holy. It can bring wholeness to you. Um, what healing needs to happen in your life, be willing. It is a process. Guys, healing is a process. Um, behaviors that we've picked up along the way don't just disappear because suddenly we're aware of them. It takes time to begin to work through these things and there's pain and two step forward and one step back and it's okay that it's a process progress trumps perfection life is a journey there is a process to everything there's a process um listen you're gonna blow it just because you're aware that you're projecting today doesn't mean okay now that i know it i'm never gonna do it again you're gonna do it again it's okay you're gonna blow it you're gonna hit an obstacle you're you're gonna you're gonna encounter a trigger that you're not sure how to deal with, or it blindsides you, hits you off guard. It's okay. You're going to, you're going to blow it sometimes. Sometimes you're going to encounter things that you weren't ready for. You got to remember you're incredible. You're incredible. You're awesome. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a divine gift from the father. He has a plan for you. He wants to restore you to himself. He wants to restore your identity. He wants to remove the things that are limiting you and keeping you from being able to experience him in fullness you are incredible and you are human. And when we blow it, God has a never ending, unfailing, new every morning, fresh mercy, fresh grace for you to access at the throne. So this has just been a little snippet about thought projections. And so I want to encourage you to, if you've got some of those behaviors and you think I might be projecting some things onto other people who don't deserve it. And I want to see this begin to be resolved. I want to have wholeness and healing. I encourage you to, to do the work that's necessary to seek out some help. Um, spend time in a journal, spend time with the father. And before we go, I just want to pray for you. Father, you see this person, you see their heart, you know, their story, the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end and the middle, the highs, the lows, the valleys, the mountains, you know, it all father, you are with them. And it is your desire that this person walk in wholeness, that they experience the fullness of their identity, that they experience the fullness of relationship, that every broken and fragmented piece, God, you know exactly how it fits into the new mosaic. I thank you, Father. I step into that place where I can see you as the master artist, as the master mosaic artist. And by faith, we thank you that fragmentation is being integrated, that you're going to begin to place and position these broken shards, these difficult pieces. You're going to place them into that grand design, the way you have planned for them. So, Father, we step into that by faith. We trust you even when we don't have trust. We have to actually ask you, God, help us be able to trust you with this process and through this process. I thank you, Father, that where we are today is not where we have to stay. We can move, we can grow, we can change. In you, we live and move and have our being. So Father, make us whole. Father, make us whole, make us one with you. Restore unto us joy. Restore joy, Father. So I just thank you. I thank you that this person that's watching right now is gonna have the ability and the grace to step into their story, to step into their thought distortion and begin to discern the difference between the truth and the lie what it is you have for them, how you have made them, why you have made them, how they connect here on the earth to other people. And I just thank you. I celebrate this person's victory. I celebrate the wholeness of their identity and I give you honor and glory in Jesus name, amen. So if this has been helpful, I wanna remind you um, to share it with other people. Maybe, maybe hit like, leave me a comment, I will respond. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, um, I'm going to just come back here and just be vulnerable and authentic. I know what I know and I don't know what I don't know, but I love to learn. I'm on the process. I'm on the journey with you. So thanks for your time today. I look forward to next time. God bless.